Right, today's session is very much focused around an introductory session, uh, looking at what is Just Too Easy. We're going to have a think about how your school can access Just Too Easy and implement it into your classroom. We're going to have quite an in-depth look into certain tools and activities you might want to use. And we'll also be offering a Q&A session at the end. As well as that, I'm going to signpost you in uh, where to where you can access further support. So what is Just Too Easy? The Just Too Easy Tool Suite is a learning platform designed specifically for teaching and learning. We offer a whole host of easy to use tools, helping you and your learners to create, share and learn. Our tools are suitable for learners from foundation stage right up to key stage three. As well as that, the tool suite has inbuilt accessibility tools, which help you to deliver a personalised learning experience for your class. We offer tools such as text to speech, word lists, audio recordings, personalised file sharing and so much more. The tool suite offers tools that cover all aspects of the curriculum, from coding and data handling to digital authoring and blogging. We've literally got a tool for everything. Accessing the tool suite couldn't be easier. So users can access the site via any Wi-Fi connected device from laptops to tablets, phones, Xboxes, PS5s, Nintendo Switches, whatever you want to use. Each user will have their own cloud-based storage area called My Files. So that's much like your Google Drive or your OneDrive. My Files has unlimited storage and as well as that unlimited file size capacity. So you can drag the biggest files you've got and it will never fill up. There's an easy to use drag and drop function. So your files can be accessed anywhere, anytime. As well as that, files can be shared at the click of a button. Shared access is instantaneous, allowing you to share and collaborate with your colleagues, learners, groups, and other classes with ease. Accessing Just Too Easy couldn't be easier. So you can access this through j2e.com. And this is the login page. Now, this really depends on how your um, account is set up. So some of you may have a manual account, in which case you will be given a school name, a username and a password, which can be inputted into this box here. Now, some of you will be accessing us through a third party provider, in which case you will have a universal sign on or a USO. For those of you that are accessing through those, you can click on any of these buttons. So we have LGFL, BGFL, Google Classroom, Office 365, C2K for Northern Ireland and Hub for Wales. So you can click on any of these buttons, use your USO to log in and that will log you straight in. Now, in terms of help, we are coming into the sh tool showcase part of the webinar. However, it's important to point out there is a help section within every user's J2 launchpad. So when you log into your account, it will look like this. You'll land on the homepage or what we call J2 launch or the launchpad. And you'll have all your tiles ready to use. Now, the one that's probably most important is the help tile down here. So when you click the help tile, you'll access all of our help content. You can see here there's quite a lot to choose from. We can search for certain content. So we could search for JIT Paint, for example. And that will pull up every article or video that is tagged against JIT Paint. There are different media formats for your help content. So we've got videos and uh, articles here. We can click on the articles and see. So they are very step-by-step -step designed to show you how to use specific tools. These can be printed by clicking the print button. So sometimes it's nice to have a hard tangible copy of your help document. So you can print that out and have it on your desk, for example.
Right, activity ideas. With so many tools available to use, you really do have endless activity options to use with your class. So here I've just gathered a selection of activity ideas for um, just giving you some ideas of what you could use. So I've created a J2E5, let's build a story. So this is uh, using J2E5 here. And it was designed around teaching children how to create their stories. So we had a page for designing their characters, for planning their setting, for brainstorming their plot ideas and discussing uh, additional items. So it offers that scaffolding and that extra structure that your students might need. We've also created a book review in JIT Paint. So this is just a background image of a book and your students can right over the top. They can also draw illustrations to add in. So brilliant for your infant creativity. We have games-based learning in J2 Blast. So we have times tables and spellings. You can even set your own spelling tests as well as national curriculum tests. Each um, school will have their own blog site via J2 Webby and it's really easy to publish content. You and your students can publish content at the click of a button um, and that will be pushed to your blog site. We can also have a look at um, digital literacy through data handling. So this is J2 data and databases. You can create collaborative databases. You can share content. You can give a real life context for certain pieces of data that your students might be looking at. So now we're gonna have a think about how to create specific tasks for our students to use in the classroom. So what I've done is I've planned out um, how you might deliver this over sort of a half term around a specific theme. So the specific theme I've gone with the age old um, favourite, mini beasts, brilliant early years and key stage one um, theme. And I'm going to be implementing that into these three tools. So we're going to be making the research part of things, so the research part of this project, a lot easier for our students by using J2 Launch. We're going to be creating some content around Mini Beast using JIT, and then we're going to be publishing our content straight to our class blog using J2 Webby. So to begin with, when we log in, this is our launch pad. You can see here we've got a number of different tools that we can use. We've also got things like our My Files, which is always that first tile on the right of the launch. This, um, every user will have their own My Files area and it's always placed as the first tile so it helps your students to identify where it is. As well as that, you'll have a Shared Files area. So this is for any uh, document that's shared with you as a user. So that would be where your students would access their work that's been shared with them by a teacher. Teacher specific tools, we have pupil files. So this is where you can access all of your student files. If I click on that, you can see all of our registration classes and each student will have their own file or folder. We've also got J2 Whiteboard, which is a teacher specific tool and J2 dashboard and manage users, which are the admin areas. So here you'll be able to add more users, classes, edit the launch pad, check logins. There's all sorts of things, so please have a look at that. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our own tile for our students. So one of my biggest uh, time wasting activities was trying to get my students to access resources that they would need for a specific task. So for example, I wanted them all on one website. Now it's almost a painful process trying to get them to access that website by writing out the web address. So this is where this tip comes in very, very handy. What we can do is we can create our own tiles that we can share with our students. To do that, we're gonna press on the plus here. I'm gonna name this one Mini Beasts. Um, BBC Bite 
size, you can call it whatever you like. There we go. And we're gonna add in a URL. Now, if you want to, you can link this to two specific files or folders within your My Files. So it could be a document that you want to share with your students and make it very, very obvious to them where that file is. So you can link to that. And I will show you how to link to a document then shortly. But we're gonna to link to this specific website here. So this might be a great video that I want my students to access and use as part of their research project. So we're gonna copy that address at the top and we're gonna paste that in the URL box there. Now it will pull a thumbnail or you can drop your own picture here and create your own thumbnail. You can change the color of the tile if we want to. And then when we're done, we can click plus. Now, anything that you add into J2E is added as into your own personal account. Anything you want other people to access, you need to make sure that you share it. So this tile has been added onto my launch pad. To share it with my students, I'm gonna press the share button, which is these two gray heads here. And this share box will become very familiar by the end of the session. We can type in a name if we wanted to. Alternatively, we've got the drop down menu here at the end of that box. And that gives us a range of different options. So we can share the whole school. We've got our registration class. So each user is part of one registration class. We've got teaching classes. So these are smaller groups that you can set up within the manage users area. So I kind of describe these as maybe your table groups within your classroom. Um, you might have your you know, higher ability, middle ability, lower ability. Um, you might have um, even working pairs if you wanted to set those up as groups, you could have that. We've got individual users and also other registration classes. So you can literally share this with anyone in a school and you can share it with multiple classes. So you could add additional classes as well. So maybe you've got class two. So I want to share with maybe just your um, year one cohort and you've got separate classes. So it's entirely up to you. Now that will be shared until you remove those permissions. So if you have shared by accident, or it's just a time specific share, you can X those out and it will take it away. So just to show you, this is Harry's account. He's in my class one. If I refresh that page, there's that tile. He can click on that and he can access that specific website. So that in itself, probably have saved me about 10 minutes in every year one computing lesson that I've taught over the last few years. So it's quite a nifty little tip. Right, so just to give you an idea of my files and how it works before we delve into some child created content. If I click on my my files, here we go. It is a cloud based storage area. So much like your OneDrive or your Google Drive, you can drag anything into here and it can be stored here and it is password protected so you don't have to worry about any sort of hidden safety issues. We can drag and drop anything into this. So here's my hard drive folder and I can highlight those and drag them in and onto this Dropbox here. When I release, it will upload pretty quickly. Now that depends on the file size. So if you've got bigger, uh, bigger video files or maybe bigger PowerPoints, just factor that into your prep time. It might take a little longer to upload. But there we go. So we have lots of different activities here for my students. So what we're gonna do is we're going to share this because we're gonna use this later. This is a newspaper template we're gonna use with our Key Stage 2 students later. Um, and I can share that really quickly and easily with my students by clicking on the green eye here and click share. So this will look familiar from the tile. It has the same properties. We could type in a name or we can use the drop down menu and share with our class. And there we go. Our students have access to that. Now, as I was saying earlier, we also have access to file links. So you could copy this link and add it as a tile instead, just to make it more obvious. It might be, I don't know, homework for week one. You could put that so it comes up on your student's launch pad. It's entirely up to you. Just make sure the file is shared and the tile is shared. 
But in that format, my students would access that. When they log in, they go to their shared files. These are their different folders. They can click list files. There's that newspaper template. And Harry can have a quick look at that if he wanted to. So that is pupil files. Right, so now we're going to get Harry to complete some uh, child created content and we're going to add it into we've got a class mini beast ebook that I've started to create with my other students. So we need a bit of content for that. So I'm going to open up Harry's account and we're going to open up JIT, which stands for Just Too Easy Infant Toolkit. So it is designed for your early years in key stage one, but there are elements that are still appropriate for key stage two. It will open up automatically in right. We have our different apps here along the top. So there are eight different apps with a different curriculum focus for each. So write is all about writing and literacy. We've got painting, does exactly what it says on the tin. Turtle is for your early years coding. So using algorithms, debugging. Chart and pictogram are your data, um, beginnings of databases, animation. We've got branch, which branching database comes into the year three stroke four curriculum, maths curriculum. So you might want to have a look at that. And mix, which is brilliant for creating ebooks with different um, formats. We will have a look at that in a second. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a quick painting within JIT Paint. And we're then going to use it as a background in writing. And then we're going to add that into the class ebook through Mix. So when we open up the paint, they all open very, very similarly. We've got, um, an off, uh, it will op give us the option for choosing a template background. We've got our document tools along the left hand side at the top here and our specific app tools along the left hand side here. So let's choose a park background that's brilliant for mini beasts and because it's good for mini beasts it has linked that library, the, the PNG library <coughs> for the mini beast library. We can change the library if we want to by clicking on the library name we've got different options we can choose flick through them we've also got the um, arrows on either side we can if we want to choose from other sources so we've got our my files it might be your students have already um, saved some pngs from the internet so they could access those through my files it could be that you as a teacher have shared a folder of images for them to use and they could do that through the shared files they can search for an image so let's look for a butterfly when I click that, we've got lots of different options. So this is really nice for their literacy. We think about their spellings. Also opens up the conversation about how you search for items, looking for keywords and that kind of thing. So you can click on those. And lastly, you can also take pictures straight in if you wanted to. I'm going to use that butterfly and I might choose my mini beasts. Let's go for a little ladybird and a slug and a snail. Let's put our snail over here. There we go. We don't want to clutter it too much. Now we've also got different options here. We can draw straight onto this picture if we wanted to. We can change the colour of things. So we could change that to a different yellow. We've got the dropper option here, so we could change that colour slightly. Let's make it more of an orange, maybe. There we go. We can fill that in, so it's a different colour. We've also got texture tools here. So if I press this button here, I've got different textures. So we've got grass, which is nice. So we can fill that in. And there we go, there's our mini beast picture. Now, what we can do as a, as a student, we can save. So that saves it as a working file. So what that means is it will save as a JIT file. So your students can come back in and edit this further. So this is really useful if maybe you've got an activity planned that you know is just too long for one lesson. 
So you can use this as a kind of interim save and then come back to it. Once they have completed their painting, they've also got the option here, they could save as a stamp. So that saves it as a character or they can save as an image. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna save that as an image because we want to use it as a background image within a write document. So now we're gonna to go to write and it's gonna offer us our template backgrounds, which are lovely, but we want to use the one that we've just created. So we're gonna to go to pictures and there's our picture we've just created. Again, you've got all the usual picture options if you wanted to. And there we go. So there's our lovely image we've just created. Now we're in right, so it's very much focused around literacy. So we could say, um, our in this project by Harry. There we go. We can change the font size. We can change the font. We can change the font color if we wanted to. So these are really good discussions with your students about maybe having a look at what looks aesthetically pleasing. You've also got the word lists. So we have a huge amount of word lists. You can add your own in J2E5. We've got different word lists. We have got a mini beast word list somewhere. There we go. We can hover over any of these words and listen to them. Butterfly. So we could say, we saw a, we could say butterfly. When I click on that, it will type it for me. Again, let's change that. There we go. We can also hit enter. There we go. Let's make that white so it stands out. Now what we can do is we can um, highlight words and or phrases and use the text to speech at the top. By Harry. Or we can leave it unhighlighted and just use the text to speech and it will say whatever is written on that page. Our mini beast project by Harry. We saw a butterfly. And there we go. So that's JIT right. Now the last thing we can do as a student so we can record audio. Now this is a really nice functionality for capturing audio evidence. Now there are gonna be certain students that that is a really important part of their evidence. It might be that you're working in early years. It might be that you're working with SEND pupils. I did have one student that was a, a selective mute and he would not talk into anything apart from an iPad. <laughs> so this would have been a vital piece of um, evidence capture that I could have utilised um, to gather that kind of speech and language evidence. So what you can do is you can just hit record. It's going to ask for a, a microphone and then we can hit record again. They can record what's over on the page or it could be that they've recorded some script or it could be that maybe what they've written on the page is very much limited, but verbally they can explain a lot more. I'm thinking about specifically students with dyslexia maybe. So you have lots of options here. Our Mini Beast project by Harry. We saw a butterfly and there we go. They can re-record if they don't like it, so they can play it back and listen to it. When they're okay with it, they can click okay and that saves that there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save that working file and that will save like that. Now, just to showcase to you in my My Files, so here's Harry's paint so there's the working document but there's the one that we exported so we can see or the other way around sorry there's the painting and there's the one that we've exported so we could print this off if we wanted to if we needed it for evidence here is the audio recording and it's saved separately from the writing so that's a really nice touch you have two pieces of evidence there our mini beast project by harry okay so you have all those pieces of work now so as a teacher, what I can do is I can go to my pupil files. I can, if I want to, find Harry's folder, which is the class one and there. If I don't know what class Harry's in, I could go to list files or if I want to see the most recent pieces of work as they come in. And I can click list files. So there's that piece of um, audio. There's the writing document. I can click in there and have a look. There's the painting. 
And there is the paint working document. So you have four pieces of evidence there, really quick and easy to use. Now, what we can also do whilst we're sort of thinking about evidence, we're in a Harry's pupil files. So for example, maybe Harry's got a speech and language folder and we need evidence for it. What we can do is we can click on the green eye and we've got this lovely button that says QR code. So I can click QR code, it's gonna generate one. It's got the file name and created by. We can publish that. So what that means is if we publish that, anybody with a mobile device can scan that and access the file content. So that is really safe to use if it hasn't got any um, sensitive data in it. So no pictures of students or no student um, full names, that kind of thing. Um, but that's really useful for um, maybe literacy books or history books or speech and language books. So if somebody can, somebody such as uh, middle management, senior management, offset inspector, heaven forbid, could scan this and use this as evidence. Right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to finish this up by adding Harry's content into our Mini Beast ebook, our class book. So I've already created this in a mixed document. It's here, as I said, it's a working document. And I've added in different students pieces of work. So we can see we've got a lovely painting here. I've worked one on one with my students, getting them to import their work and add in some annotations. We've even done a, a pictogram. So I used pictogram, created, um, there is a mini beast template, I've used that and imported it. And then I've got my students to analyze that data at the bottom. And all I need to do to add in a page, I'm gonna delete this page for now. To add a page, we just press this plus button at the top. And that gives me different layouts. So I can choose whichever layout I think is appropriate for the content. So I'm gonna use a write document. So this layout might be more appropriate because it's already got writing on it. This color here, links to the colors of the apps here. So I'm gonna look for a light green, which I know is this way, there we go. And I'm gonna hit tick. So that will give me a right blank page. So I could, if I wanted to add some writing in, I've got all the functionality of write. Alternatively, I can use pre-created content. I can do that by pressing the load button up here at the top of this page. And there we go. So I can access write documents in my files. If maybe a colleague has shared a file with me, I could access that there. But what's really nice is I can add in my pupil files. So this is really useful if you've got maybe your younger students where they're only creating one page each and you want to collate it into a project. So here are all my pupils and I can filter that by class. I can filter that by pupil. And there we go. So I'm going to use that writing document we've just created. So add that in. And there we go. And that's all I need to do. So now I can save that. That's going to save that final page. I can maybe access that next week or once I've done another lesson with another student, I could add in their content next time. Lots and lots of different options. Now, the one thing I can do is I can push that to our class blog. And that is done through this button here called the publish button. Now, if a student was to do this, it would have to pass through a moderation process. So uh, they would get a notification that says that their work needs to be moderated by a teacher. It won't go live until it is moderated. Now, because I'm pushing this up as a teacher, it's gonna go automatically. So that will go to J2Webby, which is here. Each class will have their own blog site, which can be accessed through the blogs here. Now, the blog site is created as soon as a student publishes some content. So if you do log into your J2Webby and you have a look at blogs and it just says staff, don't worry. Just get one of your students to push any sort of content. It could be a blank word document for all you want. Um, and that will generate that blog site for you. So you can see here, uh, class three is yet to push any content. So we can go to class one. There's that lovely mini beast ebook that we've just created. You can see who's created it and when. 
I can view the post. It's going to open it up. It pulls all the interactivity. So if there was any animations in here, they would be able to be playable. We can see the work that our students have done and we can also comment if we want to. Pupils can comment on other pupils' work, but again, that needs to be moderated. So that passes through the moderation site, which is here. So you can see here, we've got various um, of webbies that need to be uh, moderated and also some files that also need to be moderated. So it is very safe and secure. Right. So moving on slightly, we're going to have a look at a key stage two specific um, task. So this is based around the Titanic and we're going to be having a look at J2 PDF and J2 Webby. So we're going to create a template and within this particular document, I'm just going to showcase to you, we've also used J2 E5 and J2 Data. Now these will be showcased during the key stage two webinar later on this term so please keep an eye out for that but just to show you this was created by a student um, in j2e5 i was a die-hard powerpoint fan but now i use j2e5 for all of my presentations it's just so easy to use you can add in text you can add pictures with animations um, you can if there's no formatting involved you can rotate the pictures very quickly We've imported data. So this is created using J2 data with database. So we have a Titanic template that you can use and we can export the, the data in different formats. This is an animation that I created in JIT Animate. So you can embed videos quite quickly and easily. And here is a YouTube video. So this is really useful if maybe you've got students and you want them to watch a specific video, you can embed that into a presentation in itself. What's even nicer about the YouTube videos is that they play without adverts. <laughs> Always useful. And then this is a PDF that we've embedded. And I'm going to show you how we created this. So I've already added that template into my My Files, which is here. And I have already shared it with my students, but unfortunately with PDFs, we're a little bit limited. They can't be edited. Um, these are traditionally worksheets that I would have had on my hard drive as a teacher that I would have come in in the morning and I would have printed out enough for my students and they would have filled out in person. So this is really just a digital version of that activity. I want them to create something digitally so they're going to use this PDF as a template and I'm going to make it editable. So to do this, I'm going to use J2 PDF, which can be found here. Now what J2 PDF is, is it's a J2E5 file, but it loads the PDF as a background. So you can write over the top of it, draw over the top of it, do whatever you'd like to do. Now I could, if I want to, drag this template here. So I could drag it onto here and it would just upload automatically. But I've already added this into my file. So I've clicked on open PDF. There's that newspaper template. So I can click that and then click add and that will import that. And you can see that has added that into the background and I can type anywhere now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a few bits and pieces to help my students with their activity. So I'm going to add some audio instructions, first of all. I'm going to do that using the media button up here. And I'm going to go record sound. I can name the file if I want to, but I'm just going to hit record. Hi class, can you create a newspaper front page uh, announcing that the Titanic has sunk? Make sure you use the word list with the sentence starters if you can. And there we go. You would probably make it a lot longer than that, but just to give you an idea. And then we're going to lay that wherever we want. So probably just off the template there. And there we go. We can, if you want to add some text, you might want to add some text about what you expect them to do. You could add in a success criteria here if you want to. 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a word list. So what that will do is it will help my students um, with spellings and it's also going to create sentence starters. So I've already got these in a document. And here we go, Titanic report sentence starters. So what's nice about the word list is it doesn't have to just be words, it can be whole phrases. So I'm going to copy these. I like clicking copy. This could be copied from the internet. This could be copied from um, a worksheet. It's entirely up to you how you copy that. And then to create a new word list, so we've pressed on the word list button up here. We're going to click on new. Now you have all your word lists that you've already saved if you've created any. You also have the library. So there's various already preset word lists and shared word lists. So this might be something that's quite nice maybe for um, subject leaders to create word lists that link into certain subjects or you know, for literacy coordinators to create word lists that are appropriate for certain year groups. It's entirely up to you how you do this. But we're gonna create a new one and then I'm gonna just paste those sentence starters. Now, as long as they're separated by the return key, that will set that as almost like a button. So I'm gonna say Titanic uh, news paper. There we go. I could spell, that's better. And then I'm gonna click save. I click yes, there we go. So that will add that at the bottom of that document there. You can see, um, I can listen to any of these. It was discovered that, in addition to this, if I click anywhere and then click on that button, it will type it for me. So that's your text to speech. Now, what we can do is we can highlight that text and we can see the text to speech at the top. He agreed that. So that's really useful. And also your students, if they want to, can click type and um, talk as you type. So we could say. There. Boat had there we go. sunk. Let's just delete that. There's your text to speech. And that's as much as we're going to do for our template. Now, the last thing you need to make sure that you do with your word list is that you share it with the students that need it. So we're going to click on the green eye. We're going to go to share. It's already shared with my class. We'll delete that. We can share with your class, there we go. But we could also share maybe with individual users and that will only show up on those users that you have tagged it against. So this might be that you just have um, two or three users in class that need this specific word list. So you do have the option to just add those in if you want. And there we go. So we're gonna save that as our newspaper article, Titanic. My typing is awful today and click save. So we have to save that first. Once it's saved, we can then share with our students. So we can share within this document. You don't have to go to my files, but you can also share through my files. I'm going to go to share with our class. And there we go. So now my student will be able to access that. So let's see Harry's file. He learns that he goes to his shared files. He can go to list files. There's that newspaper article. You can go to edit. He can listen to the instructions. Hi class, can you? He can use the word list at the bottom. So he could say, uh, it was discovered that. He can write a title. There we go. He can double click that, resize it. He can change the font, make it a bit more formal, expand that box, move it across. So it's very easy on the formatting here. It's all, he can also add pictures in. So we've got the picture library. Again, the same as we did with JIT. We can use the search function. We can look for Titanic lots of different pictures that we can use. We can drag those in and resize them. And there we go. So Harry obviously would spend a lot longer on this. Once he's done, he can press save. 
And he's also got the option to publish that as well. So you can publish to the class blog. So that's really useful for some of your older students who might want a real authentic audience for their work. So just to give you an idea in terms of teacher and keeping an eye on marking and that kind of thing, again, we would go to pupil files. You can go to list files. There's Harry's piece of work. We can see all of the changes that he has made there. So we can keep an eye on what he's doing and when. Right, so we have come to the end of our webinar. I have tried to keep it quite short and sweet today. Um, just a little reminder, I know we haven't covered almost not even half of the tools that we have available. However, if there are tools that you are really interested in using and you don't want to wait until the next webinar, please view the tool specific help tile. So that can be found on your J2 launch pad. Um, and that will have articles on all of our tools. So please keep an eye out for that. We are also offering CPD sessions for schools. So we have J2 skills, which is up and running. And those are held Tuesdays at 3.40 to 4.40. This has a curriculum focus and we change this every week. So some weeks it might be mental health and supporting that in school. Some weeks it might be how do you promote numeracy and mathematics skills. So um, those can be booked through Eventbrite um, or there is a link through our website, which I will show you in a second. We've also got our quick bites. Now these are brand new. They're on Mondays and Wednesdays and they're only 15 minutes long. Great for those of you that are time poor at the moment, which I would think is most teachers. So these are tool specific tutorials. So each week we'll look at a specific tool. So for example, J2 homework or J2 message and how to use those. All of these will be recorded and they are hosted here within the new section of our website. So you can see here we've got some webinars. Our quick bites will be added here as a box ready to go. Lastly, you can contact us should you need to. If you are having any technical issues or you want to arrange any training or anything like that, please contact us at support at j2e.com. We are quite responsive, so we will get to you back. We will get back to you ASAP. As I've just shown you, we have got our website, which is full of resources, webinars, videos, information. So please have a look at that. We have a very active Twitter following, um, so please tag us if you're tweeting any of the work that you're creating with your students. Just too easy underscore com. Um, and also Facebook, we have a presence. So I'm just wondering if we have any questions at all. My chat is looking remarkably clear at the moment. Just, it's looking like we have no questions, which is great. Right. Okay, well, thank you so much for giving up your precious time to join us for this webinar this afternoon. I hope that you enjoy um, using some of the tools that we've showcased today. We are doing key stage specific um, webinars coming up. So we will be doing one specifically for SEND provision, key stage one and key stage two. So please join us for those. And as I've said, they will be recorded and made available on our website. So thank you so much for joining us. Have a lovely afternoon.